you see him yet? Today on the Job Whisper. Hello. Hey, we got that handshake. We can't have a fancy schmancy resume. We need to dummy it down. Look at your face. Hi, Sean. Sure. Hi. I've been serving in the Army National Guard for almost about three years. I know how to shoot and I know how to do push ups. I mean, I see other things on here. Right, so I mean, why are you afraid to talk about them? Do you think that Lori's a job snob? What? That offended you, didn't it? I think that he feels sometimes that he's failing as a husband and father. I want you to show me what you're made of. No pain, no gain. It's kind of fun being in charge again. Haven't you ever been to a gym? I have an uncle, Jim. Oh, no. I'm gonna get you ready for an interview. Seriously? Oh my gosh. What do you think she's doing? Freaking out a bit. Panic. I have no idea. Y'all ready for the interview today? I am. What are you more nervous about? The job opportunity or the makeover? Wow, you look amazing. I don't know if it's the perfect fit for what I want to do. I'm sure she wants to come back to work. When you're unemployed, finding a job can seem impossible. It's that chemistry, that spark. That's what I'm going to teach you. I'm a headhunter, and I know why people fail, and I know what it takes to succeed. You have no email address here. That makes you a dinosaur today. If you listen to me, I can land you a job. But it's my way or the highway. Listen to my method, and you'll land a job. No questions asked. Being unemployed can destroy a family, which is why there's no more important job than mine. I guarantee that in just one day, I can fix anybody and get them ready for the job interview of their life with my three-prong approach. I build their resume, I build their confidence, and I build their future. This week, I have two people who are the brink of disaster because of unemployment. There's Sean, who just got back from Afghanistan six months ago and can't get a break. And my first case, who I'm meeting today in New Jersey, Lori, who has to get a job before her family gets crushed by massive debt. I'm Lori, I'm 35 years old. I live in West Milford, New Jersey with my husband, Rob, my son, Elliot, who's five, and Sophie is two. Four years ago, we were living in the suburbs of Chicago and I was managing editor at Christianity Today. It was really a dream job for me. But then Rob got this fantastic opportunity to become a professor at a university in New Jersey. So we decided to pack up and move out here. Right. I'll see you later, okay? She sacrificed a lot for me to come here and get this job. You know, it's very easy for people to look at us and say, hey, you're doing great. And I'm like, uh, if only you knew. Well, this one is $201. You know things are desperate when you're looking around your house trying to figure out things to sell. We used to be like, okay, we're two days short. Can we live off noodles for a couple of days? And it's getting to the point where we're like, okay, we need to live off noodles for seven days until I can next get paid. We have to find an extra source or we're, we're just not gonna make it. And what did they see? In the last year, I have tried quite a few different routes to try and find a job in the publishing field. I'm just bewildered to be in this position. I got a great college degree. I've studied overseas. I feel like, why haven't I been able to convert that into, you know, into something successful? I think Lois should stay in publishing because that's what she trained as. But the truth is, at this stage, and this is a horrible thing to say, but um, I don't think we've got the luxury. All right, let's get you on your side. I'm very good at administration, but like if you say secretary, that's kind of a difficult word because it makes me feel like I'm back at square one. I'm like, no, you, you need to get out there. You need to do something. So we've actually had pretty sort of significant arguments about this. It affects the marriage in so many ways. It almost feels like you're not allowed to dream. When you've got no money, you've got no dreams. I feel kind of helpless because what Lori needs is something I cannot give. She needs someone else to believe in her. You see him yet? Lori is clearly broken and I have one day to turn her around. I don't care if she likes me, I don't need her to like me. But she better do what I say if she wants me to get her a job interview. Good to meet him. Hello. Hey, Lori. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Ooh, a little weak on that handshake. My first impressions of Lori, not good. Her five-year-old son has a stronger handshake than she does. I'm gonna teach you today the secrets that I know as a headhunter and how to find a job. And I'm very direct. Are you ready? 
What was your last job? What did you do last? I was a managing editor in okay. a publishing company. So what was your last income? Uh, I think it was around 37000 Okay. How many resumes have you been sending out? Uh, I think I've sent out around 50 in the last year. The last year? Yeah. Oh my God, that's one a week, by the way. That's not enough. Her family's living off of noodles and she's lobbing out one resume a week? Ridiculous. She should be sending out a minimum of five a week. Pretty much all the jobs I've applied for so far are editing jobs. And how many interviews have you had? One. One? <laughs> are you kidding me? She's holding up for publishing? Those jobs are extinct. She might as well be playing the lottery. I I'm scared about accepting just any job because I'm worried that if I get into something, it's going to lead me down some road that's not really right for me. Well, you don't need the money, is that what you're saying? No, but... You don't want to get your hands dirty? You think it's beneath you? Putting myself out there for humiliation just makes me think, why did I do this? No one's asking you to clean a house, but you know, sometimes support jobs pay more than an executive job. Okay. Lori's a classic job snob. The woman needs to get back to work, but she's letting her education and fancy job that she had in the past predict what she should be doing in the future. Not today. Her husband and her need more income for these children. She needs a job and she needs it now. I hear your words, but I need you to walk the walk. I've got a little surprise for you here. I'm gonna show you a copy of your resume that I brought with me. And I wanna critique it with you. Here's the funny thing with you, is you're an editor, right? Yeah. But you've got typos, you've got things going here that belong over here. She's an editor and this is her resume? Unacceptable. Her formatting is all over the place. Yeah, it doesn't look like that on my computer. Because you need to send this on a PDF, on a permanent file, so it stays the same. I'm a little embarrassed about my resume, that it lost the formatting. That's really embarrassing as an editor. Here's the main thing. Today, we want to get you a job. I want to see you get back to work. So we can't have a fancy schmancy resume. We need to dummy it down. Look at your face. The truth is never easy. But if you can't take the truth, don't ask me for help. Wait, wait. <laughs> Why would I want to dumb myself down? Because you want to get the job that's available for you. Do you know how to work a computer? Yeah. Well, I'd like to see it somewhere down here, right? Here's something important to me that everybody's hiring, legal assistant. I didn't hear you mention that to me. It wasn't that important of a job to me. Well, to you, but this is an important thing. I'd like to see this bigger and bolder. She just doesn't get it. She needs her resume to be practical for what's in the job market today. Lori has the administrative skills, and that's what she should focus on, because that's where the jobs are. And she's got to get this job snob ability out of her system. She's got two small children. What's more important, putting food on the table or waiting another year for another job? I gotta work. That's the answer I wanted to hear. I've learned that I need to be a lot more strategic with my resume, but I don't feel comfortable with dumbing it down. That seems completely opposed to what a resume is supposed to be. Now that I've talked to Lori, let me talk to Rob, her husband, and see what he has to say. So, Rob, let me ask you something, and your wife's right here. Do you think that Lori's a job snob? What? <laughs> uh, what do you think? Y you. You know, I love you, but you know, the truth is, I think sometimes that she's got this like, like, almost like a perfect job that she feels that she's got to get. That offended you, didn't it? You mad at your husband or you mad at me? Uh, you. <laughs> okay. okay, because did I hit a raw nerve? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm in my 30s now. I feel like I don't need to start a, like I'm just graduating from college. But you haven't worked in four years. Don't shoot the messenger. I asked the question, but Rob gave us the answer. I think the directness is good for Lori because, frankly, she needs a dose of reality. We've got these massive student loan payments that we're going to have to find an extra $700 a month. Lori needs to get a job. Do you trust me? I will try. Lori's a classic job snob, but she needs a job and she needs it now. So remember, spouses' opinions matter. Think of them as your mini career coaches. Your resume should be on a PDF. Make it easy to read, at least a 12-point font. And don't forget, unless you're Sarah Jessica Parker, no middle names on a resume. It's pretentious. Coming up, will Lori be able to handle the truth? I have no idea. And later, meet Sean. Will this GI have to go back to Afghanistan? 
I would rather go to war than face unemployment. Lori is in need of a job now, or else she will not be able to put food on the table. You know things are desperate when you're looking around your house trying to figure out things to sell. I'm going to see if this job snob is still caught up on the job she wants and not the job she needs. I don't feel comfortable with dumbing it down. So I want you to go get dressed right now like you're going on a job interview. You have 10 minutes to get ready. Okay. I'm wondering what I've gotten myself into, what he's going to lead me into. This is the dress test for Lori. She says she's seriously looking for a job. If that's true, she needs an outfit ready at all times. It's like Superman having his cape ready to go. Uh, this I wore to the job fair, but it's 10 years old. Um, this is even older. These are all my pants. I've drugged them around to all their houses that we've lived in, and I don't think they even fit. None of them fit, so I have no idea. Where is she right now? What do you think she's doing? Uh, freaking out a bit, panic. No, I thought I had a sweater to wear over it. Lori, you have five more minutes. What? Seriously? Oh my gosh, okay. She hasn't got too many options, you know. Right, well, we're giving her two minutes and then I'm leaving without her. Right. I am gonna try this. It might look really shabby. Uh, I'm gonna attempt it, see how I look. I'm ready. All right, that's acceptable. Honestly. Lori failed that test. She took more than 10 minutes to get ready and she picked an outfit more appropriate for a funeral than an interview. Don't they have hairbrushes in New Jersey? I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea what's gonna happen the rest of the day. I am very nervous. It was time to get my black widow out of the house and to New York City. I wanted Lori to see that with her background, she could have a job tomorrow if she was willing to open her mind and tempt so, Lori, this is where I wanted to take you. This is a Deco. It's one of the world's leading staffing companies. Temping isn't sexy, but it's a great way for Lori to get a paycheck and put food on the table for her family. And I think it's just what you need to build your confidence back and jumpstart your career. Once you explain how it's flexible and I can try out several different companies, I think it's a good idea. With Lori's attitude in a good place, it's time to see if the administrative skills on her resume are still sharp. First, I set her up with a typing and PowerPoint test. Okay, here we go. PowerPoint. Okay. Oh my gosh. I think I did it. Oh no, I failed that one. Okay, I have not used a computer for way too long. It was a real shock to to realize I, I didn't know that things have changed in the last few years. That's what's so important about doing this. We can focus on the things that you've done really well. For instance, I see your typing skills are like way above average. PowerPoint, that's something that you'll do a tutorial in to catch up to speed. Next, it was time for a customer service exercise I call Irate Customer. You're gonna say, this is the Magic Shack. This is Lori, may I help you? Sparkle. The Magic Shack. Ah, you're hired. <gasps> Direct back. Awesome. Hello, this is the Magic Shack. This is Lori, may I help you? Yes, I ordered a crystal ball last week and it's broken. Even worse, it's not telling the future. Well, we could uh, do everything we can right now to- Will you replace it for me? If it arrived to you broken, yes, we can definitely replace it for you. I can take down your details and- my details? What do you mean? My age? My <laughs> measurements? My size? No, sir. What kind of shack are you running there? We just need your address so that we can uh, reship something to you. And we'll do our very best to restore your confidence in us. Very well. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, Lori, stand up, stand up. Come here. Big hug, excellent <laughs> job. Bravo, excellent. Thank you. With Lori's confidence growing, I had one final test in public speaking. He's a workplace guru. Here he is, Stephen Vespucci. Thank you, Lori. I think my little job snob is starting to see the light. Very proud of you, Lori. Thank you. Lori. It has hit me today that it has been a very long time since I've just gotten myself out there and out of the house and definitely has boosted my confidence. Well, Lori, we've had a long day. We have some skills that you do need to work on. PowerPoint is one of them. But overall, guess what? 
you really have all the qualities and skill set that's needed to really find a job right now. You know that, don't you? I feel like I've been procrastinating on my uh, job search, and you have definitely given me the boost that I've needed to get back to it. What was the hardest part of the day for you? Uh, being called a job snob <laughs> was uh, not funny. But you know what I mean, and you know what I was getting at. I do know what you were getting at. The part that makes me the happiest is that I've seen genuine change in Lori today. She's come from someone who was shy and timid, had a little bit of trepidation about interviewing. But by the end of the day today, I could see her being a star performer for some lucky employer. Let's go. Okay. It was time to finish Lori's transformation. She needs to fix that resume by putting administrative skills at the top. Then I'll use her resume to get her an interview that could change her life. I'm thinking office manager, customer service, legal assistant, or that dreaded secretary. And most of these would pay more than Lori used to make. I'm sure I can get her a job, but will my job snob be willing to take it? Remember, don't be a dress test failure. Always have an interview outfit ready. I call it my three B's rule. No boobies, no belly, no buttocks. Learn new skills and sharpen the ones that you have. And don't spend all day on the internet. Finding a job isn't the same as finding a date on Match.com. Now it's time to meet Sean, who needs a job to stay with his family. A father and a husband, he's faced with the tough decision of getting a job or going back to the military and being separated from his family. My name is Sean King. I'm 41. I live in Enfield, Connecticut with my wife, Tara, and our son, Eric. My last job uh, is with the Army National Guard. I drove fuel trucks and my resistant ambush protected vehicles. I was deployed for about a year. Some of the medals that I got were for overseas service. The blue one is from NATO, and the green one is actually the Army Commendation Medal. This award from the Army was for a physical fitness award. I always wanted to do something with my life that was exemplary, and I'm really proud to be a soldier in the Army National Guard. When Sean decided to volunteer to go to Afghanistan, um, it was a joint decision. We prayed about it together, and we knew that it was something that we had to do. My employment prior to joining the Army National Guard was sporadic, and I volunteered to deploy to Afghanistan because I knew it would mean steady income for at least a year. One of Sean's most important aspects is his dedication to his family. At his age, joining the Army, it's a bold move, especially during time of war. When Sean returned from Afghanistan, it was a tremendous relief for me. I immediately started looking for work as a truck driver. I mean, I must have sent out 60, 70 resumes. He gets up early in the morning, he starts internet searches, he goes out different places and fills out applications in person. Unfortunately, it just didn't pan out. Because I'm still part of the National Guard and might potentially be deployed for another year, employers are a little hesitant to bring me on board. So now I've been unemployed for about five months. The bills have been piling up. I can't pay for daycare. I can't pay my wife's medical bills since she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. We haven't been able to pay our rent every month. All of a sudden, I went from hero to zero. I'm a nobody. You know, I have nothing to offer my family anymore. It makes me feel really bad that he has such a low self-esteem. Maybe I should join active duty army. Even if they send me back out to Afghanistan, at least I have a job. If Sean is thinking of going back to Afghanistan for a paycheck, then I need to get him into the Viscusi boot camp right away. For the next 24 hours, the only one he'll be taking fire from is me. Hi, Sean. Hi. Pleasure to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Yes, I'm Tara. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming. So Sean, it's time to get to work. Absolutely. So Sean, take me through some of the basic information that I usually like to know. First of all, how old are you? I'm 41 years old. And what's your highest degree of education? Uh, see, there lies, I think, lies some of my problem. I actually, my, uh, my highest degree of education actually is a GED. Uh, a GED? That makes my job a thousand times harder. Tell me about the jobs that you've been applying for now. Where have you been applying? What kind of results are you getting? 
Well, uh, most of my job search has been conducted online. I don't want you online all day. This isn't Match.com. Yes, sir. This is the real world of work. Yes. Do you understand? I see. It makes sense to me. Do you really see or you're just saying yes to me? I think Sean is kind of yesing me to death. Yes, sure. Sounds good to me. Sean is putting up a good front with me, but I know his confidence level is at an all-time low. We need to fix that. Coming up, Sean takes charge of me. Bring those legs up, bring those knees up, come on! And later, our mommy gets a makeover. This is very, very exciting. I'm scared about accepting just any job. Well, you don't need the money, is that what you're saying? Lori needs a job now. We are living month to month. We're just not gonna make it. We need a miracle now. And my second case, Sean, may have to re-enlist if he doesn't get urgent help now. The last thing I wanna do is be going off a war. I feel like I'm letting my family down. What kind of job do you apply to? I would type in like driver. You fill out an application online. Do you, have you gone on any online. interviews at all? I mean, yes, take I have. me further. I actually did went, go on an interview for a position as a tow truck driver. But I think he was uh, apprehensive about the fact that I am still in the National Guard and that I could still be called up to go off to war again. Sean's problem is that he keeps making excuses. There's the GED, there's the military, there's the internet. I want to get him back on track and focus and find a job. Well, you know, I, I have experience as a soldier and I know how to shoot and I know how to do uh, push-ups, but I don't feel um, as marketable as uh, some of the, my competition out there. Let me see what you have on your resume. The resume is your meal ticket but nobody gets it right. He has two resumes, a driving one. A driving, I got that. And then another one that lists everything else he forgot to mention. Sean got it wrong twice. I mean, I see other things on here. I see retail sales. I see customer service. These were real jobs, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, so I mean, why are you afraid to talk about them? What was Sean thinking? Why would you leave half your experience off the resume? So Sean, we started this conversation with you saying that you had no marketable skills. But in fact, we now know that you have, right? Yes, absolutely. Let's take them one by one and address them in a specific way. I want to start with your military background. OK. You have sales. Yes, sir. Customer service. Yes. You manage people. Yes. Help me out here. What else? I started off waiting tables at restaurants. You know, that's hospitality. Hospitality is huge, right? Yes. These are all areas for you to be considering. Hmm, I never thought about it that way. Sean has forgotten what it's like to be in charge. It's time to move on with his life, and I'm going to help him do it. But if my yes man really wants to move on, we have to dig deeper. It's why I want to talk to his wife, Tara. OK, Tara, what's it like to be every day in the same house with your husband who's not working? Well, I think that spending too much time together has put a lot of pressure on us and uh, we have moments where there's friction between the two of us just because of we're being physically in the same place at the same time too long. Unemployment is so hard on most marriages. I see it all the time. First unemployed, then divorced. I want to help Sean find a job before he decides to re-enlist. Sean, one of my goals is to help build your confidence back so I can get you out with gusto into the workplace. Right, Tara? Yes. You showed me your physical fitness medal. I want you to show me what you're made of. So I'm gonna take you to the gym right now. I don't know what he's got up his sleeve. God only knows what he's gonna have me do to try to figure out a way I can get a job at a gym. I mean, this is kind of awkward. I have a plan to get his confidence back. They call me the Don of Headhunters. My methods are controversial, but what I'm about to do at the gym will remind him what it's like to be in charge again and be his own man. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Sean. Hi, Sean. I'm Todd. Nice hey, Todd. Nice to meet you. Okay, Sean, quick test. Name? Kate. And? Todd. Great. Right. I called that the name test, and Sean passed with flying colors. You know why? He repeated the names after he met them. That helps you memorize them. Listen, I want you to start working out, warm up, and I'll meet you in a couple of minutes. I got something I want to do.
So how are you doing? I'm great. Okay, well here's the twist. Today I'm gonna let you be in charge. You're gonna work me out, train me for the day. I never let anybody do this. Are you ready for this? <laughs> I am. Let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, yes. Do it again, see you. We gotta do it faster. Yeah. All right, come on, let's do some setups. No, the wrong way. All right, let's get with the program here. So, you gotta climb aboard. All right, let me demonstrate this for you, Steve. One, two, three, 48, 49, 50. I certainly know why Sean earned that physical fitness medal. He's in great shape. Come on, get up, Steven. Let's go, you got it, you do it. Well, Steven hasn't been to the gym in quite some time. Got no pain, no gain. It's kind of fun being in charge again and giving the orders instead of taking orders. Bring those legs up, bring those knees up, come on. Get down, level, level. Come on, put in your best effort, all right? Let's go. Hello, you got? Very good, very, very impressed. Sean, here's the thing. All the words that you were using when you were teaching me to work out are exactly what I want you to do in finding a job. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain in the job world means take the pain of rejection and move on to the next one and move on and move on until you land a job. I'm gonna make some phone calls, have some things in mind, and I'm gonna line up an interview for you. And I want you to bring all that same attitude and that energy you just gave me here on the workout floor to the job interview with you. Right on. You got it? Sounds like a plan. You're gonna end up with a job if you follow your own words. Awesome, thank you. Steven's twist on things really gave me great insight into how I need to approach looking for a job. I feel great. I feel like there's hope for my future. I feel confident to take on the job market. It's just unbelievable to see Sean in the gym today. He was really in his element. He was confident, he was directive, he was just full of energy, and that's the energy I want to see him present to prospective employers during an interview. Before my one day fix is complete, Sean's two resumes need to be combined into one that has all his experience. Then I'll use that resume to land him an interview. Here's what I'm thinking of for Sean. Hospitality, sales, a gym manager, or there are military friendly employers out there so I'll definitely want to look into that. Coming up, our mommy gets a much needed makeover. And then we're gonna go right into the interview. Sean, how are you? Nice to meet you. And later, Sean goes for the job. And then you're working all kinds of crazy hours. Why are you complaining about working long hours? Look at your face. What, wait. After one day together, I found out exactly why Lori wasn't working. The truth is, she was being a job snob. But five days after meeting Lori, her interview was set. And my stylist team is ready to freshen her look and get her that interview outfit she needs so badly. Lori, how are you? Good. Good to see you today. Oh, you really improved on that handshake. Listen, I brought you here today to this department store because we're going to get you ready for an interview. We're going to remake you completely. You excited? Yes. I found a job opportunity that I think is perfect for you. It's with a company called CFT, Commercial Furniture Transport. It's a customer service manager. You look like it's the kiss of death. <laughs> do I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. You, do. you have that glazed over look on your face. What does that mean? You got a job interview. That's awesome. Lori's not quite as excited as I thought she would be about the interview today. We'll see if she's really a job snob or not. I have my stylist here, Anita. She's gonna help you look professional. We're gonna redo your hair, we're gonna do your makeup. I wanna freshen up your look. Good? Yeah. Okay, good. Come on, let's go. So I have an interview and a makeover all in one day, so it's a little bit uh, intense, and I, I don't know all what to expect, but it's exciting, too. Let's see. Anita. Hi. Look she is. Anita, meet Lori. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Well, I've heard you like black, black, and black, so we're going to change that a little bit. We're going to try and inject some color. I want you to have fun. OK, I'm going to let you girls do your magic. All right, so we want confidence. I want sass. Right, let's go shopping. OK. Come on. Um. 
I really have no idea what people even wear anymore. So I'm, I'm gonna go with this and see. How do you think you did? You I think I did all right. Good. I saw a lot of really cute black things. Oh dear, I'm not off to a good start. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see this one of your outfits. Oh my lord. Is that your pajamas? I appreciate the colour, but babe, it looks like your cat threw up on you. <laughs> no, no, back in there. God, oh well, dear. Well, I'd like to see something a little more tailored, too. Exactly. You've got this itty bitty little waist, and you're doing nothing. You're wearing yeah. like a moo moo. Well, let's see. My stylist has her work cut out for her. The belt is brilliant. There again. All even needed to find the perfect interview look. While well, I get this tired mom to the salon, where she'll be queen for a day. So, Lori, because Stephen wants a professional look, what we're going to do is just enhance your natural. Blonde colors with a few golden highlights. We got a couple more hours and then we're gonna go right into the interview. I don't think I've had a manicure. I don't, I don't know if I ever have, so this is very, very exciting. No perfume or cologne, anything like that. Nothing's worse than going on an interview wearing a really strong perfume. That's the perfume of the ex-wife of the guy that you're interviewing with. <laughs> Oh, you look amazing. It's very pretty. <laughs> now it's time to get back to my veteran, Sean, who needs a job to stay with his family. Maybe I should join active duty army. Even if they send me back out to Afghanistan, at least I have a job. The interview I booked for Sean is at a company that recruits veterans. Sean, I'm meeting him in Hartford, Connecticut, the home of travelers. Good morning, great Looks to see good. you. Oh, thank you. Put your tie a little there. Hey. Good. You all ready for the interview today? I am, I am. Okay, so I brought you here to a very GI friendly company and they have a special program for insurance adjusters. That's terrific. Uh, you confident? Yes, I am. Now remember some of my rules. First of all, you have your cell phone in your pocket? I do. Turn it off, not <laughs> even on vibrate. Yeah, I forgot about that. Three hard copies of your resume, always bring them with you, even when you sent them ahead, because you never know someone could misplace them or put them somewhere else. Okay. All right, I'm we're all set. set, let's go. Okay. Travelers is a Fortune 500 property and casualty insurance company with about 32,000 employees worldwide. Today, we're going to be interviewing Sean for an inside claim representative position. We offer a very market competitive salary, great benefits, and for a veteran, we are very military friendly. It's not an issue for us. At any point in time, we have 12 to 15 people that are on active duty. If I get the job here, it's going to make a huge difference for myself and my family. It's really exciting just to have this opportunity, and I'm hoping that I do get the job. Sean, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Please, call me Jim. While Sean interviews, I'm going to be in the conference room next door, watching how he does. Thanks for taking some time to come in and talk with us today. Oh, well, thank you for this opportunity. Connecticut National Guard, that's terrific. Th thanks for your service. It's my pleasure. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what you've done with the National Guard? Well, the type of work I've done is just... Uh, stop swiveling. Types of Seasick. And why did you join? I'm curious well, what, what motivated you there. Well, I always felt a deep-seated need to um, be in service to my country, to be a soldier. Uh, it was kind of like, you know, my country needed me and I needed my country. Mm -hmm. Way to flaunt your service, Sean, without being arrogant. Good point. Good. I, I also noticed some retail in your background. Yes. Can, can you talk to me a yes. little bit about that? I actually started out in retail um, back some years ago. I worked for the Bombay Company. I started out as a sales associate and I worked my way up uh, into assistant manager and ultimately manager. Can you tell me a little bit about why you left the retail world? I didn't feel challenged enough in the sense that there was enough room for growth and then you're working all kinds of crazy hours. Why are you complaining about working long hours? You have to stay from morning till night because you have employees that don't show up for work. No one wants to hear that. So let's talk about the job a little bit. We do a lot of training. Okay. So, so you don't have to be an expert. Talk to me a little bit about how you've learned things in the past. Sure. Well, um, I learned by actually doing. I mean, on-the-job training is the best form of training, I believe. And I've had many experiences both with the Army and in the civilian sector with on-the-job training. Good. Very good. Do you have any questions of me? Oh, uh, I do. What office would I be working out of? Great question. The most likely choices would be, you know, Windsor or Hartford. From a long-term perspective, would you relocate? Or what's your thoughts on, on other locations around the country? I would be willing to relocate. I'd be willing to go anywhere that travelers wanted to send me. Um, 
whatever is going to uh, benefit the company, uh, my family and I, we, we would be prepared to move should that need arise. Good, very good. Overall, very good. I like it. I've really enjoyed our conversation. I wanted to thank Thanks you again for this time. unique opportunity. My pleasure. Okay, thank you, Jim. Sure. Six months ago, Sean was in Afghanistan, and today he interviewed with a Fortune 500 company, and he held his own. I'm very proud of him. I think Sean did very well. He answered my questions completely. He focused on the various aspects of what I was trying to get from him. So, in general, I was very pleased with the interview. Never in a million years would I have imagined myself here a week ago. I think Stephen's given me a whole new outlook on how to approach jobs and how to search for that special career that everybody longs for. And I'm really grateful to Stephen for all he's done for me. So Sean, how do you feel you did today? I feel confident in the responses I gave in the interview. I thought uh, the pointers that you gave me were very helpful. Good. Well, I'm proud of you. I think you did well. Thank you. And thank you for your service to our country. Hey, oh, give me a hug. Give me a hug. Everybody gets a hug. Yeah, all right. Take care. Thank you. So remember, don't do what Sean did. Sit still during an interview. Be relaxed, but attentive. Turn off your cell phone before the interview. Compliment the company website and do your homework before an interview. Coming up, is Lori a job snob or not? I don't know if it's the perfect fit for what I want to do. I wonder if she really wants to come back to work. And later, find out who gets the job. Lori has never needed a job more than now. We are living month to month. We've probably got eighty-five, ninety thousand dollars worth of student loans we've got to pay. After putting her through the ringer. Oh my lord! Is that your pajamas? And giving this mom a royal makeover treatment, it's time to see her brand new look. Lori, come on out. Ah. Turn around. Let me see the whole thing. Woo! It's <laughs> so beautiful. Congratulations to our team at Anthony Lennon Salon. And need it. Best job ever. Oh, she made it easy. You look amazing. When I met Laurie, she was really wearing sort of conservative, mommy clothes. And the one thing I wanted to do was give it just a little bit of zhuzh. Now she's a little bit bigger on the bottom, so we've used an A-line skirt and it really draws it in and gives her that hourglass shape, which is what we're all looking for. Are you ready for the interview? Yeah. Okay, let's go. I'm about to go into my interview. Uh, it's this big warehouse in some part of New Jersey I've never been. CFT may not be Lori's dream job, but she needs this, and it pays even more than her last publishing position. Hi, I'm Lori Quick. I'm here to see Marty Gore. CFT iOS is a family business that warehouses, delivers, and installs office furniture and residential furniture. The position that we are interviewing for today is a customer service manager. The entry level is $40,000 a year. Anybody that interviews for this job must be dedicated. The people that are on our phones are the face of this company. While Lori interviews today, I'm going to be watching her in the next room to see how she does. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. Where is Hewitt anyway? I read that in your resume that you live in Hewitt. It's about an hour's drive north of here. Okay, so in a lot of ways, the customer service manager position for us is extremely, extremely important because our people tell the client that their furniture is here and the minute you get on the phone with them, where is it, when am I going to get it, they're just, they're all over you. It's kind of nuts. It gets very, very, very crazy. Staying calm when, when people might be upset, I, that, that's a big strength Oh, it's, it's a huge one. That's good. Very good. I have to tell you, I looked at your resume and at first breath I thought to myself, wow, this is an amazing resume. Why is this woman interested in coming to us? What's going through your head? I've been out of the workplace for a few years because we had some kids. And so I, I just, uh, I need a, a step back into the workplace and this, this seems like a good opportunity. From a standpoint of being able to be here every day, that's something that's very, very important to us. So I don't know if that presents any problems to you, but. Uh, I think that reliable and dependable are two words that that most people would use to describe me. Good, nice and confident. So, Lori, I'm not sure, it's hard for me to tell whether this is something that really interests you or, tell me, you can well, tell me. Um, I, I do love the vibe that you have in here. It seems like a really comfortable place. My main concerns right now, I, I'm worried about the commute, that it's just gonna be too hard for me to, to make it in here. What are you doing? You know, um, I don't know if it's the perfect fit for what I wanna do. What is she thinking? I wonder if she really wants to come back to work. 
you know, you're used to, I think, more white collar type environments. The whole glitz of Park Avenue offices, et cetera, and that's really not us. I just want you to understand that, you know, this is sort of the way it is. Would you like to see the warehouse? Okay, great. Let's go. If Marty offers Lori this job, she's very lucky. She didn't seem to even want it very much. This is our dispatch office. Again, not very glamorous, but extremely functional. And this is our warehouse. Everything you see on the floor comes in, and it goes right back out. Guys are running around. They're coming into the office. Hey, Lori, I, I got a question on this. Hey, Lori, can you find out an answer on that? You will never be without something to do. That I can assure you. Marty was really nice. He really explained well what he does, and he, he seemed to be positive about me, too. So would I have access to the computer system that says what's in the warehouse? In terms of her strengths, she asked good questions. She was very attentive. In terms of weaknesses, she wasn't as animated as I would have liked. I wasn't able to sense, is this really what you want? How did you feel about the interview today? I felt like it went really well. I really enjoyed meeting Marty. He's Is it a job that you think interests you? I don't know. There, there are quite a few factors that I'll have to think about. You being a job snob? Steven talked to me about the difference between trying to get my dream job and being a little bit more realistic. Um, honestly, I feel like he might have dropped the bar a little too low. She's making a big mistake by not listening to me. Her dreams for a job in editorial may not come to fruition, and the realities of supporting her family and making money through a job is what's important. Keep me up to date. <laughs> okay. After going through this process with Steven, I definitely feel more energized to engage with my job search. I feel really grateful that I got back out there and I had my first interview in a very long time, and I think it went well. Whether or not Lori's offered this job, I hope she can take the confidence that she's gained and put it towards making her future better. Unemployment can ruin anyone's life, but don't be a job snob like Lori and do your research. Sean should have known there are opportunities out there for veterans, and now he does. Remember to follow my three-step approach. Build your resume. Think of your resume as a temple and a template. Worship it. Keep it clean and accurate. Every job counts. Build your confidence. Listen to those around you. Partners, spouses, and family know you best. Listen to them and then listen to your heart. And then be ready to build your future. Get yourself back to work. The first job leads to the next and we all have to start somewhere. Don't be a job snob. But most of all, if you're not getting job interviews, you're doing something wrong, which is why my job is never done. See you next time on The Job Whisperer.